So we want, really want to be able to sketch a quadratic with and without technology using a variety of techniques, either using factorization, completing the square, quad form. All right? And if you look at your OneNote, I put some summaries there, which I'll show you in a moment, but a couple of two, two new little things that is going to add to your repertoire. So we've got our equation here. This was question five. It said, can you please put it in the form of x minus h squared plus k? In other words, that's code for completing the square. We're all happy. We halve this, pop it in, minus 16 plus 14. Don't worry, I'll come and chat to you in a minute. We've got our vertex because we have to, Aiden, reverse the sign. For this one, keep the sign. All good? All right, x-intercept. It said find where it cuts the x-axis. Now, you could have, if you weren't paying attention, gone right up to the beginning and used the quad formula because you clearly cannot factorise that one. Do we agree? Factors of 14. 1 and 14, 2 and 7, no go zone. But hopefully you realise you've done the hard work by completing the square. And so it's at this point that we can use that to solve. Correct, Amundo? We're trying to get to x. You will not expand it because if you expand it, you get right back to the beginning and that's no good. So we get this, get rid of the take to, add to. What do we do then? How do I get rid of the squared? You square root, for not forgetting to stick a plus and minus in front, and then away she blows. We? Okay. You are going to get questions. So this is the bit that you need to listen to, even if you did that. You are going to get questions where you, it's not nice to use completing the square. It might be a minus four in front of that x squared. It might be a minus seven. Ooh, who wants to do completing the square then? So we use the quad formula, and you're all probably going, yeah, but we did that before. We know how to do it. We did, but we didn't focus a lot on when we get to this point here, when can we simplify it, okay? So if you go and you look at this and you compare with the answer that you got for completing the square, they're different. First things first, you are not, you are not allowed to go this underneath the square root divided by two. <coughs> Big fat no no. You have to simplify the square root first. Well, how do we do that? Do we remember? Do we remember how to simplify a third? No? Good. So we look for a square number that goes into it. Yeah, too many. I mean, it's poor little eight. Clearly, it's four. So what you can do here is say that's eight plus or minus, you can split it. That's root 4 times root 2. Why? Why did we do that? Because do you know, Aidan, the square root of 4? He says no. <laughs> we don't know which Aidan that is. <laughs> right, we know that the square... He's just coming from lunch, wasn't listening. Square root of 4 is 2, and then you still got your root 2, and now... Can you see that we can divide 8 by 2? Two? 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now, I could write 1 root 2, but that looks a bit dorky. So we just write that as root 2. Huzzah? Let's just do one more because you will have to do it now. I'm doing this. Keep in mind, you could put this in your calculator and it would do it for you. But next year, you will have a test no calculator. So you should understand what your calculator is doing. So pick another one. How about we have 6 plus or minus um, root 27 over 6. So how are we going to simplify that? Same deal. Is there a square number that goes into 27? Nine? Nine does, right? So this is six plus or minus root nine times root three. Agreed? All over six. So this becomes six plus or minus. What is the square root of nine? Three. All over six. And now you focus on 
the numbers that are just standing by themselves. Is there a number that goes into 6, 3 and 6? Yes, 3. So I can rewrite all of that. Well, 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 goes into 3 once, so that's just 1 root 3. And 3 goes into 6 twice. Right? That's it. You might see some of the textbooks write this as 1 plus or minus a half root 3. Or 1 plus or minus root 3 on 2. What have they done? Just divided each one by two. Yeah? You're allowed to separate your fractions. We knew that from primary school. So that's not a massive drum, is it? If you freeze up in a test, how can you use your calculator to help you? Well, we write this in our calculator, and some of you are going, oh, but how do I do that? How do I put the plus minus? Well, ignore the plus minus. Just go plus, oops, plus root 27 over 6. It simplifies it for you, and then you just change that plus to a plus minus. Agreed? Obviously, we want you to be able to do it algebraically first. Are we good? This will be recorded. It's there. And the vertex. This was quite nice, yeah? Because you could complete the square. What we said before, imagine if there was a 3 in front of this or a minus 5. Trying to complete the square is going to be disgusting. Lucky for us, there's a formula. Hmm? It comes from the quad formula, my friend. There is, it's not another, but there is a vertex formula, right? Oops. Yep. So minus b over 2a. Boys, can you just listen because I know this will take like a couple of seconds rather than 10 minutes. This is our formula now. You look at that and it goes, what? 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 <coughs> Aiden, you mentioned quadratic formula. Do you see anything that's a bit similar? Yeah. Your vertex formula lies within your vertex your quadratic formula and don't you think it makes sense this is like this is like the thing in the middle and then you're moving a little bit to the right and then you're moving something to the left right what does the F stand for I wish I could do my thing and then you ask questions so this in a moment will show you you will get your X value well when you have an X value how do you find your Y value Sub, sub, baby, sub your x value back in. And that's, that's maths language for sub your x value into your y, okay? f of x, f of x is just the fancy form of y. Remember we talked about that last lesson? It's just a shortcut that we can use instead of saying, please replace x with whatever. We just say f of, and we expect everybody to know. So if we come back, I don't think I need to do this 8 million times, nor do I need you to do, I'll put that back, don't worry, nor do I need to make you do eight examples of this. Let's just have a look. Here's our vertex. Yes? So if I'm now using my formula, x equals minus b over 2a, what's my b value? Negative 8. So what's negative, negative 8? Eight? 8. What's 2 times A? Well, A is 1, so yep, 2 times 1 is 2. And lo and behold, we get 4. Yep. So you just said before, what's that F of whatever mean? It's saying, here's 4, what's my Y value going to be? If only there was something somewhere there that said Y equals. Oh, well, I've got two. I've got one here. I've got another one here. Which one do you want to put it into? Oh, actually, sorry. The bottom one, yes. But remember, if this was like a three or a four out the front, we wouldn't have this form, would we? So trust me, when you put four into here, four squared is 16. Eight times four is 32. Plus four, oh, good Lord, that's 32. Plus 14, guess what? It is, in fact... Minus 2. 
So do you need to do a whole lot of these examples to find the vertex using the formula? I'd like to think not, because you already know what the B and the A are, don't you? Sammy's not convinced. We'll go through it. Okay? So what am I going to want you to do? Please finish 19C. We'll be at the back doing them together. Then you've got your worksheet, which I'll give to you, which is just asking you to do some matchy-matchy with some graphs and equations, and then three graphies. And I'm sorry, but I'll have to interrupt you at about five past just to show you how to do some calculator stuff. Love you. <laughs>